Hey guys, I'm back. <laughs> Just get, I've been fighting a little bit of some, you know, physical issues, but I really wanted to do another Q and A. So Rod again has pulled some questions, and what's been amazing is we're having such a great response. And it's exciting because I want to answer everyone, you know, so the feedback has been remarkable and I feel so honored. So please keep it coming. This one's from Teresa. Do you suffer from body dysmorphia? How do you cope with it if you do? Teresa, that's a great question. You know what? I do think I still suffer with body dysmorphia only to myself I I think what it is is you know like for me I knew I, I didn't realize how bad I was and because uh, I can't see it you know but I know it's not good but I don't see it very vividly to myself so that dysmorphia goes on but I don't let it win as I don't, it's not that I don't have slip-ups, man. Sometimes I see a mirror and I'm all, ooh. Like Anna like, goggles. Yeah, just, it's, that's what it was. I used to, thank you for bringing that up. I used to tease Rod, you know. You know when you've, let's say, had something to drink and you've heard the term beer goggles. It's kind of like that. I have like these anorexic goggles where they, on me, it works differently. But I have so much clarity now. And as the body, you know, your mind gets better, more healthy, it seems like it slowly dissipates. So it's not as strong, but some days it will come and just bite me when I'm not expecting it. And I, I just out of curiosity, does that happen to all anyone else? Like, I know we all have some kind of body dysmorphia, but I'd love to hear because it doesn't have to be thin, overweight, healthy. It's not ir irrelevant of that, really. It's just the negative self-talk and the, you know, that circle, that uh, hamster wheel that doesn't like to stop. Okay, well, this one's from Lila. She says, how about a story about your wedding or something from your first dates together? Okay. So, when I had known Rod, I had just met him, and I had never had the thunderbolt, and I'm not making that up, I'm not the big romantic, blah, 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 you know, and I think that's great when people are, but I've just never been that way, and when I saw him, it was his eyes, I literally went, and I had, it was not the way he looked, nothing like that. It was his energy. And I remembered, I got tongue tied <laughs> trying to talk to him. Um, when we were working together, I remember one time I was chewing gum and he goes, hey, we're working, spit that out. And I went, okay. And I'm well, missing the part that I'm your was your personal trainer at the time. Well, yeah. Back in the day. Well, yes, he was. That's how we met. He was my personal trainer. But he was. I met. He was working with me. Uh, sorry, on my exercise at the time. This is when I was doing very good mindset. You know, at the time, and <clears throat> I was on one of those machines where you do leg raises. You know, those Roman chairs, and you have to do knee up so it works your tummy. And he could, I was doing it like this, like I was like chewing, like a silly, right? Silly gum, I don't know what I was doing. And so he was like, you gotta focus here. And he made me spit it out in his hand. And I was like, okay. And I had a crush on him, right? And then he, what he does, he pops it in his mouth. I, I, got, I was like, I don't know. How, what to feel about this. I was like a kid. I went home that night to my internet friends, you know, many, many years ago, 
when I used to play games and I go, does that mean he really likes me? I'm like in my 30s or late 20s or whatever. I don't remember my age. Or the, well, how old? No, it was my 20s. That's right. And I'm, I'm adding, asking him like I'm 11 years old or 9 years old in class and someone's passing me notes. And I was, and people were teasing me. They're like, what are you, five years old? They're typing back to me and I'm all, does it mean he likes me? Because I kind of like him, but I don't want to tell him. But that was the first time I got really hit with just that bug. For the and record, it never went away. For the record, I've never done that with any of my other clients. Just so you know. Yeah, you better say that, <laughs> bud. You have to live with me. No, just kidding. This one's from Laurel. She says, I was wondering if you still get Anna setbacks, and if so, how long do they last? Laura, that's a great question. And or how I, long did it stop, I should say. I will tell you, those moments, they do happen. They do, absolutely. Sometimes on a very bad day, it feels like it takes over the whole day. But Rod like helps me a lot. And I notice what helps me is change of environment. Just, okay, then we need to go outside. Let's get out of the doctor's office. I, it's to not feel medical, you know? And having those anorexic setbacks because you know what I did is the most natural process I made unnatural. I still, when I see food, I don't go, oh, you know, I still, ah, I have, I, it's, I re have to, I'm still reprogramming. So those moments happen, but they don't linger like they used to. That's true. That's very true. They, they don't linger. They used to, some days I couldn't snap out of it at all and I hate using that word snap out of it as if we could just snap out you know but it takes work and when I say showing up sometimes all it is is just going outside that's sometimes that's all we can do that's why we're outside right now yeah keeping it positive guys honestly it's we're gonna keep this going as much as I can I love it please keep doing this these are very important questions and they mean a lot you know and you guys know me i gotta i gotta stay transparent tell who i am this is how you get better be honest vulnerable and open even when it sucks so stay in clutch even with my scabby nails stay in clutch Recording. Okay. Ooh. Ah! <laughs>